always said you were the strong, silent type. I shot my partner last night. This morning, there he is on my doorstep. Declan tries to change the past. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! Mysterious Ways, Tuesday at 8, 7 Central. Three kids killed in one wreck. Another man dies over the weekend. I'm John Freese on Everett Road in Bath. We'll tell you what neighbors are saying about this dangerous stretch of highway coming up next. Norton's mayor is fighting for her political life as voters will soon decide if she stays in office. And Calm Air will spread its wings at the Akron Canton Airport starting again soon. 23 News starts right now. 23 News is made possible by our founding partners, Summa Health System Hospital, the University of Akron, and First Energy. Live from downtown Akron, this is PAX 23 News. Hi, everybody. Happy Monday. Good evening. I'm Eric Mansfield. Welcome to 23 News, where Akron and Canton come first. Our top story tonight, two accidents on Everett Road in Bath have claimed four lives in just one week's time. 23 News reporter John Freese reports that while police are blaming driver error, neighbors are wondering what can be done to prevent another deadly mistake. They say lightning doesn't strike twice, but this small stretch of road just might be a place to steer clear of. It lands on the driver's side. Bath police were back on Everett Road today, taking measurements to figure out how a Richfield man lost control of his van early Sunday morning. Lost control and lost his life. The road is fairly narrow, and it's two lanes, and you do have some hills that are up and down. But the death toll here is up, way up. Oh, it's just horrendous sound. The metal on metal is... It's the sound of another crash Carol Boyd heard a week earlier, one she'll never forget. And roadside memorials will help others remember three lost lives, maybe. The problem is very definitely that people do not obey the speed limit. She's right. In just one year, Bath police have handed out more than 30 speeding tickets here. And officers say they'll be running radar again very soon. We're going to be out here, and uh, uh, they're going to see us stopping people. This speed limit sign does little to warn drivers that this is a dangerous road. But neighbors around here hope to change that. They're going to talk to the county with hopes of putting up a more explicit sign, one that says, danger ahead. Eric, let's go back to you. Okay, thanks a lot, John. Now, the Summit County Engineer's Office will be taking a look at the Everett Road situation sometime this week. Well, motorists could see flames from I-76 as they drove by the Main Street exit around 2 this afternoon. Here's why. Flames shot out from the second story of this Akron home. The smoke from the fire was visible downtown as well. No one was injured in the fire at this multiple family house on West South Street. The flames gutted the second story. Fire investigators blame a burning cigarette for the blaze, which did $30,000 in damage. Investigation continues tonight. Well, a bus fare could soon be going up for students in the Akron area. Right now, junior and senior high school students pay 65 cents to ride the bus. The Akron Metro Regional Transit Authority, though, is considering increasing student fares to the regular rate of $1, since many times drivers just don't have change. Metro RTA will hold a series of public hearings to discuss the proposal, including one tomorrow in Barberton. Well, from Canton tonight, the home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame could soon have a world-class zoo as well, if one councilman has his way. Richard Hart wants a new zoo. He's proposing a half-billion-dollar facility covering as much as 500 acres. Now, his plan includes lions and tigers, a drive through area with bison and moose, and an amphitheater, even an aquarium. Canton has not had a zoo since the 70s when Nimicilla Zoo closed. Well, also from Canton tonight, the National First Lady's Library will have a new home. The City National Bank Building will house the Canton Museum. The National First Lady's Library Education and Research Center announced today that it's awarded contracts for the new facility, including to the, to the Gage Cern Architects. Now, since 1988, the museum has been housed in the parlor of the home of First Lady Ida McKinley, wife of President William McKinley of Canton. Well, thousands of Akron City water customers will soon be getting a notice in the mail. It looks a lot like this. Don't be afraid. It does list the levels of contamination in your drinking water. All test results were in the acceptable range from these tests. Now, by law, cities are required to notify residents every July 1st as to the status of their drinking water. Akron City leaders say this year's report is now at the printers and will be mailed out sometime this week. Well, a former Akron councilman is looking to run again, but not for council. 65-year-old John Frank says he's giving serious consideration to a run at the Akron School Board. 
Frank served as a councilman from 1977 to 97. He tells 23 News that he'll make a final decision on August 1st. Well, Akron City Council is still working on legislation restricting the sale of a replica 9mm handgun. Now, this comes after an Akron policeman almost shot a 14-year-old carrying the replica last week. It's actually just a lighter. The Akron Law Department is still researching how other major cities handle toy and replica guns, so the ordinance is not expected to come up at tonight's City Council meeting. Well, tomorrow, residents in Norton could make history, becoming the first city in Summit County to ever recall its mayor. But Amy Addis isn't going down without a fight. It's now up to voters to decide if Addis should stay or if she should go. I'm going to give one day to every citizen to come in and talk to me. Two years ago, Amy Addis' rise from secretary to city leader was a sign of change. But now those signs are quite real, both for and against keeping her in charge. It's a very nerve-wracking time for me and for the whole city. Our future hangs in the balance here. Some residents want Addis gone, feeling she's played favorites and mismanaged the city. Joe Danko says he's seen enough. I'm not again being a woman. Her being a woman now. But Danko does think Addis has forgotten about the little people. The mayor walks there with her nose up in the air. <laughs> Just keeps walking, won't even look at you to stop and talk. Uh, I think we'll keep her. And Boichi is among those who see no reason, though, to shop for a new leader. I get give her a long, get a more chance, give her a little more chance, see, you know, see what she can do. Still, other residents think all this political ping-pong is a big waste of time. They think it's a shame that the city council and the mayor and the whole city uh, can't get along. Addis says she's tried, and she'll keep on trying if the voters give her the chance. We ran out of signs last Tuesday. We have about 220 out there, um, and I have a lot of support, more support than I did so when I won, I believe, back in 99. Now, the polls open in Norton tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. They stay open until 7.30 p.m. A simple majority will decide whether Addis is recalled. If she is recalled, a Norton councilman will fill in until a new election is held in the fall. We, of course, will follow it throughout the day. We're well, coming up next on 23 News. The wild blue yonder was both wild and blue this weekend, but not too far yonder. The web picks up where consumer numbers leave off. We'll explain. And pilots landing a new contract means a commuter carrier will start taking off soon again in our area. Mike. Thanks, Eric. Mr. Nolan picked a good week to take some vacation. Nice day today. Things are going to warm up this week, but not bad for the first full week of summer. Your forecast is coming up in just a couple minutes. Stay tuned. You're watching PAX 23 News with Eric Mansfield. set the stage for your future at the University of Akron. We set the standard for excellence and student success in Northern Ohio, giving you unparalleled choice, opportunity, and value. We offer exceptional scholarship and financial assistance, and our Career Advantage Program gives you a competitive edge in the new economy. The University of Akron has set the stage for you. Experience the Akron Advantage. Join us, and together we will shape the future. Why is Ford F-150 number one? Check it out. Right now, your local Ford store is offering a fully equipped Ford F-150 Super Cab at the low lease price of just $279 a month for 36 months with $2069 due at signing. It all adds up to one heck of a deal. That's right, just $279 a month for the truck that was named a Consumer's Digest Best Buy. The best trucks are built Ford Tough. Your local Ford store always leading the way. Everyone likes to know what's happening close to home. That's why people tune in to PAX 23 News. It's also the reason why more and more people choose Realty One for hometown real estate services. Whether you're buying your first home, looking to build a new home, or scaling down after a lifetime of achievement, Realty One's experienced professionals have you covered in town and around town. Connect with the best from your hometown. Call 1-877-328-2634 and connect with a Realty One Realtor.
Welcome back on this beautiful Monday evening. Hope you're enjoying a barbecue or whatever you're doing for dinner tonight. Comair will soon be flying back into the Akron Canton Airport. Beginning July 8th, the commuter airline will resume some flight services. Comair's normal flight schedule starts by mid-August. The Akron Canton Airport lost 15% of its normal passenger traffic during the Comair strike. Well, Hudson's quaint, quiet tradition could get a lot noisier. Tonight, City Council will debate the direction of the downtown area, including possible amendments to the Land Development Code. Now, if Council makes changes, several new businesses could open downtown near Hudson Square. Well, nearby, dozens of Stowe residents are saying, not near my home, to Home Depot. They're upset about the giant home retailer planning to build on Kent Road across from the Stowe Community Shopping Center, just west of the Stowe Glen Retirement Community. Now, the city has to rezone 21 acres of land for the project. The Planning Commission could vote in a few weeks, and residents are expected to come back then to protest the plans. Well, frightening information is being out tonight, or is out tonight, about recalled children's toys and products. One in five recent child safety product recall hotlines, well, they aren't working, or worse, don't have the correct information. 23 News web reporter Marty Shadokati has a new website that will clear up the confusion in tonight's web world. Eric, if you're trying to check on whether a children's toy or product is safe, or you're just trying to return one that's been recalled, there's a real good chance that the information you get won't be accurate, or you won't even be able to get your money back. Now there's a new website, www.safechild.net, that can save you time, money, and possibly your child's life. It's available for anyone who has kids or works with them. It includes all recalls of all products intended for children from 1990 to the present. Everything from cribs to bunk beds to playground equipment. And instead of hunting down the latest recall information, it'll come to you if you sign up for a confidential email notification service. The scary part about all this, Eric, is they found out about all the problems by accident when a consumer watchdog group was calling about the website. Needless to say that the companies in question are actively working to become compliant. Okay, thanks a lot, Marty. Now, if you have a web-related problem or story, don't hesitate. Give us a call. Contact us at 23news at wkyc.com. Well, up next on 23 News, a lot of cars eat up your wallets. Now, you can bite back. We'll tell you why. And, uh, and preparations continue for the NEC Invitational out of Firestone. We'll take you to the links. A new enemy for Akron's Peregrine Falcons. We'll tell you about it coming up. News is sponsored by the Children's Hospital Medical Center of Akron. The life of every child is full of many battles. For Jake, his biggest battle was with cancer. But Jake was very fortunate because he had an ally, Akron Children's Hospital. There, Jake received the best treatment possible so he can prepare for his next battle. The fourth grade. Children's Hospital Medical Center of Akron, the clear choice for children. When life is rough, and that's often, and when guilt and shame are raging against you, you need a rock. We need a savior of breakwater who gives peace. And Jesus Christ is the only one who's able to say to the storm, stop it. He's our breakwater, our peace, our rock and forgiveness. I urge you to know him. I'm Newt Larson from the chapel. Progressive Auto Insurance is doing things differently. We can comparison shop for you. We'll give you our price and if you like, the rates of up to three other leading companies. If we can't save you money, we'll tell you who can. Go to Progressive.com or call 1-800-AUTOPRO. It's time for a change. And we're doing it. Go to Progressive.com or call 1-800-AUTO-PRO. Progressive, not what you'd expect from an insurance company. What if a car could adjust to you? What if a car could determine the best way to protect you? What if a car offered over 40 standard safety features? Ford Taurus, featuring a five-star safety rating. 
Right now, lease a Taurus for $287 a month for 36 months with just $587 due at signing. That's right, a Ford Taurus for $287 a month for 36 months with just $587 due at signing. Leading the way, your local Ford store. Welcome back. It was a beautiful weekend for an air show at the Akron Canton Regional Airport over the weekend. Plenty of people know that firsthand. About 30,000 showed up in green, including more than 20,000 on Sunday. Aero Expo 2001, a big success, the third largest air show in the state. PAX 23 was a proud sponsor of the event. I had a great time out there on Saturday being the MC. And, you know, we had great weather for it. It seems like all people wanted out there. The only thing that would have made it more perfect if Mike Stone could have dropped in, maybe parachuted in, and saved the day. Yeah, I'm afraid I. That would have gone over real well, Eric. <laughs> well, hey, I'm glad well, the weather was nice. Then. I'm uh, well, real good. You know, I, I, I'm glad the weather was nice, and uh, it's nice to see you. I was actually watching the uh, first broadcast. This is normally during my my sleeping period for the morning show, but uh, Mr. Nolan's off this week, so I'll be uh, with you the next couple of days. And we're thinking well, this we weather's going to be pretty nice. Voice. Well, thanks a lot, Eric. We'll show Glad what's going on outside uh, right now. We have a current temperature of uh, 78 degrees across the area. And uh, today we actually hit 80 in a lot of spots, so a pretty warm day. Currently it's 78 at the uh, Akron Canton Regional Airport. Winds are easterly at 7. Pressure's falling just a little bit. And the dew point's 56. Once that number gets below 60, we don't notice the mugginess outside as much. So still pretty comfy in terms of humidity and dew points for uh, the next couple days. But that will change a little bit. Our high officially today at the regional airport was 80 degrees. The morning low 54. Pretty darn close to the normals of 59 and 81 degrees. Back in 1988, it was 100 degrees on this day. Sun will set tonight at 9.02. Rise tomorrow 5.55. And again, set tomorrow evening at 9.02. Temperatures around the area right now, for the most part, are in the upper 70s and lower 80s, ranging from 78 in Canton and New Philly to 81 in Medina. Temperatures, then a few degrees at 80. And this is going to be the trend the next few days, but we're going to keep adding just a couple degrees to the temperature. Reason being is our uh, source of this air mass is going to be coming from the south and west. So they're in the lower 80s there, so that air will start to move in as we go across the next couple of days. It'll start to warm up just a little bit and turn a bit more humid. We have a few scatter clouds coming in from the south and east. There's actually a storm system across the southeastern United States. It's actually throwing a few clouds back at us from the south and east. So over the next couple of days, we'll see intervals of clouds and sunshine. There might actually be a shower or two. We do need the rainfall. We're just barely hanging on to a surplus for the month of June here for the uh, Akron Canton area. But for the year, we're about two inches below normal. So we need a little bit of rain. We might actually see just a little bit in bits and pieces the next couple of days. High pressure is going to keep us pretty nice tonight into tomorrow. But as the storm kind of moves towards the west, there may be a few isolated showers or storms late tomorrow into Wednesday, but a better chance Thursday into Friday as this system moves a little bit farther north and this cold front gets a little bit closer. It'll just make the stage for instability a little bit higher and maybe a couple scattered thunderstorms here and there. So our forecast for tonight, mostly clear skies, an overnight low of about 57 degrees and outside the greater Akron uh, city area temperatures will be just a little bit cooler. For the day tomorrow, sunshine again, maybe an isolated thunderstorm late in the day, a high temperature right around 85 degrees. If you're going to the Arrows game tomorrow evening versus Trenton 705, we should be starting off at around 83, 84 degrees and then temperatures falling a little bit, only about a 10% chance of a thunderstorm. Really wouldn't worry your pretty little heads about it. Think it's really a better chance that it won't happen. We'll keep that slight chance of a thunderstorm in on Wednesday, a high temperature of 86 degrees and then bumping up to the upper 80s for Thursday. Slightly better chance of a few afternoon thunderstorms Thursday and Friday, and then that front finally comes through on Saturday, a high of 81 degrees, and then cooling off a little bit for Sunday, high temperatures in the upper 70s. So not a bad first week of weather. And uh, Eric, I just need to get this satellite delay thing uh, fixed, and then I think I'll be good to go. Oh, we'll work it out with you. You know, actually at the air show, you talk about isolated thunderstorms. Saturday, we had one come out of nowhere and drenched everybody for a good 10 minutes and didn't seem to touch up in the downtown Akron at all. No, actually, there was, uh, if memory serves me right, Saturday, there was like four or five in the state, and they were so widely scattered, and as soon as the sun went down, they went away. And I think that's going to be the trend the next two days. There's going to be just a couple, but better chances Thursday into Friday. So not a bad week at all. Okay, that cooled us off, though, on Saturday, and it's good to have you with us, Mike. Thanks very much, Mr. Mansfield. See you later. All right, talk to you. Hey, Akron's Peregrine Falcons, well, they aren't faring so well. The four chicks have become the target of a grown male named Flash. 
Now, Flash is not the chick's father and sees the babies as a threat. Flash is actually from the Canton area. Now, as a precaution, three of the chicks have been removed from the nest at the First National Tower. They are very cute, aren't they? The fourth chick, named Merritt, well, she's still hanging around in the area. You can see her flying downtown. Wildlife officers, while they're hopeful Merritt can stay out of Flash's way, they're still worried about her, though. Hopeful that she'll be all right until she gets big enough to defend herself. Well, it's summer, and that means a familiar problem for local blood banks, and it's a week to remember safety at work. Monica Robbins is off tonight, but we have your health news. The Red Cross needs your help tonight here in the Akron and Canton area. The Red Cross provides blood for 12,000 transfusions every week for 61 hospitals. But during the summer, many tend to forget to donate, even though the need is often most critical. The blood isn't just used for car accident victims. Don't forget the thousands who need it for basic surgery or transplants. Now, you can help out a lot. Here's the number. Give it a call, 1-800-GIVE-LIFE. And this week is Workplace Safety Week in Akron, Canton, and all over the country. An average of 14 people are killed and more than 10,000 disabled each day at work. The Akron Red Cross is urging employees to review safety rules. Every Tuesday at 8 o'clock in the morning, you probably didn't know this, but the Summit County Sheriff's Department offers free CPR classes at the Akron Red Cross building over on Market Street. Well, coming up next on 23 News, the rock and roll capital has just added another rocker. And we'll show you a sweet machine that tastes as well as it runs. Pretty good stuff. And then coming up tonight at 7 on Channel 3 News, Having a pet is nothing to sneeze at, especially if you have children. We'll tell you why tonight at 7 on Channel 3 News. Sir, you are honest and hardworking. And like all customers, when you need electricity, you don't want to be left sitting in the dark. Well, First Energy is proud to be a major supplier of your electricity. So sit back and relax, because we've been supplying electricity reliably for 108 years. That's five score and eight years to you. First Energy. From the Lincoln Memorial to your hometown to you. First Energy. Our energy is working for you. They said you were the strong, silent type. For Your Good Health is brought to you by the Altman Health Foundation. One out of eight women will develop breast cancer in her lifetime. I can't stress enough the importance of women performing monthly breast self-examination beginning at age 20. The American Cancer Society recommends that annual mammograms start at age 40. Studies show that when regular mammograms are obtained, breast cancer is diagnosed at an earlier stage. For Your Good Health was brought to you by the Altman Health Foundation. If you want to get the best of summer, get the best of compact pickups. Toyota Tacoma. Now, with more power, payload, and towing. Lease a Tacoma 4x4 for $209 a month for 48 months with $14.99 due at signing. Or choose the full-size V8 Tundra with more power, payload, and better resale than Ford F-150. And now, Tundra comes with low 3.9% financing. Don't miss Toyota's best summer ever. See your Toyota dealer today. Hi. Got some spare change? Then get to McDonald's, because cheeseburgers are only 49 cents every Monday and Thursday. And every Sunday, 20-piece chicken McNuggets are just $2.99. Forty-nine cent cheeseburgers and two ninety-nine twenty-piece chicken McNuggets. Only at McDonald's. Everybody, the Indians in New York tonight taking on the New York Yankees game, one of a three-game series. And that's enough of a series there when you say Indians and Yankees, but now you throw John Rocker into the mix. Rocker was with the Braves last week when they were in New York taking on the New York Mets. Now he just has a couple of days in Kansas City, and he's back in New York right now, this time in the Bronx. What kind of reaction does he expect from Yankee fans? Why is, it, why is reaction always such a big deal to you people? Reaction, who cares? The mound's going to be 60 feet, 6 inches away. The ball's going to weigh 5 ounces. And there's going to be a hitter with a 34-inch, 32-ounce bat at the other end. Here's my reaction. All right, we'll see if he comes in in a safe situation tonight for the Indians. The Arrows getting set to get going against Harrisburg. Then they're on the road. They take on Trenton. Matt White is on the mound for them tonight. Coming up in golf in just a few weeks, right at the end of summer, and it's always a great event, the NEC Invitational. Today it was media day, so let's learn a little bit about, more about the plans for this year in our McDonald's Sports Spotlight. Here's Channel 23 sports reporter Katie Rossborough. 
ABC Golf Invitational tees off in just eight weeks, and the excitement for its return is overwhelming. This tournament has produced some of the finest golf and some of the greatest drama. Uh, you just can't, can't beat the excitement that, that's generated on, on a Sunday. And I look at the caliber of the field, and, and you, you have everybody here that you'd always want. So they're going up against each other, fighting you know, tooth and nail. Over 25,000 people a day enjoyed the NEC tournament here last year at Firestone, and obviously those numbers won't change as Tiger Woods will be back looking for a three-peat. If you think about a 100-mile radius here, you have you know, everybody coming out to watch the best players in the world, and, and Northeast Ohio has been great on supporting it. The fan support equates to millions of dollars that is not only beneficial to Akron, but to all of Northeast Ohio. Akron Golf Charities has distributed since 1984 over $11.2 million. I always remember Tiger winning it in the nighttime hours last year. The tournament dates August 21st through the 26th, and there still are tickets available for the NEC Invitational. Boy, Lee Owens, the head football coach at the University of Akron, is a mighty happy guy when he got the news that the former Ravenna star running back Marcus Sanders is transferring to the University of Akron to play for the Zips. He has signed his MAC letter of intent. He was at the University of Minnesota, but now has transferred out of that school, is coming to Akron. He'll have to sit out one year, and then he'll be able to play the the following season and the good news is he'll have three years of eligibility left that's good news he was a terrific talent in high school and it was a big weekend at derby downs in south akron as the qualifying for the all-american soapbox derby and the akron championships were held so our congratulations go out to 14 year old jillian esk of st paul school who won in the Masters division. And 12-year-old Joshua has kept it right there. Trophies in the family. Congratulations to Joshua, too. Joshua won the stock division. And 12-year-old Jennifer Phillips of Roswell Kent Junior High School won the super stock division. And, of course, that's coming up in just a couple of weeks down at Derby Downs. Back to you, Eric. That's sports for this Monday. Jim, you ever ride in one of those cars? Yes, I did. I went down one time before the All-American Soapbox Derby. Not in the newer, sleeker versions, Eric. I went down in the oil can, I believe they call it, one of the older ah. models. And uh, I came down about 10 minutes after they set me off. <laughs> <laughs> they go pretty fast. Hey, thanks a lot, Jim. You got it. Well, you've heard of the Ed Soul. Check out the Edible. That's right, these pieces of goodies are more than just snacks. They're competitors in the finale of the week-long Women Engine Engineering Camp held at the University of Akron's Auburn Science Center. The cars were made from food, everything from lifesavers to chewed gum and graham crackers. Hey, thanks for joining us for your news tonight. We'll see you for 23 News at 6.30 tomorrow night. Good night. Three News is made possible by our founding partners, Summa Health System Hospital, the University of Akron, and First Energy. At the University of